Hi, my name is Isaac Madsen. I am a PhD candidate here at Washington State University in the Department of Crops and Soils, and I'm working on my degree in soil science. I'm going to talk to you today about roots, root hairs, and fertilizer placement. Let's start off by talking about agriculture in eastern Washington. Dryland agriculture is specifically dominated by wheat here in eastern Washington, and as part of the REACH project, we're looking at ways to intensify and diversify this system. One way in which this system is both or can be intensified or diversified is by bringing canola into the system. So here's a graph over the last five years of the increase in canola acreage. This dramatic increase has led to an increased need for uh, extension products and knowledge coming out of the universities and there's been quite a bit of work done at both Washington State University and U of I specifically the, some of the work done at Washington State University is focused around making fertility plans when we talk about fertility plans we immediately um, go to the four hours of nutrient stewardship so these are the right time the right rate the right place and the right type. Today I'm going to focus on talking about the right place. So when you're fertilizing at seeding there's more or less four, four choices you have. You can band the fertilizer with the seed so that's the scenario you can see over here on the left where the blue is the seed and the white is the fertilizer. You can deep band the fertilizer below the seed which is the second one, or you can band below and bes beside the seed, which is the third option, or you can surface apply. And the first and the fourth option, so banding with the seed and banding on the surface aren't very common due to uh, either loss in banding on the surface or, <clears throat> or seed mortality and reduced germination and seedling emergence in the case of banding with the seed. So a lot of the a lot of the work in uh, um, surrounding looking at these different fertilizer application methods has been focused on emergence and stand establishment and yield in the end <clears throat> and not so much looking at the, the roots and what's happening under the ground. So, uh, what we're looking at is how the fertilizer band and the roots interact. And the way we do this is that we can image the roots and the fertilizer by waterproofing office scanners and sticking them in the soil and then planting a seed next to them. And you can watch the root grow down it. So you get a real rich um, data set in both time and space. So here's a image. Here's two images collected using this method. The one on the left is the canola, uh, and the one on the right is the wheat. And you can see I've circled in white the where the urea fertilizer was placed, and you can see that the wheat um, root system was grows one root into the into the fertilizer band. The other roots escape the fertilizer band. And that with canola, it's the opposite, where you've got <clears throat> a single tap root going straight towards the urea band. And so, because of the high concentration of ammonia and the pH change, this can be a toxic area for the roots. So, it can damage the wheat root. I mean, it can, it can damage the main canola root and actually lead to plant mortality. Whereas with the with the wheat, you're more likely to dodge the fertilizer band with some of the other roots and maybe lose one root. So that's what we see happening in this series of images here. We see the um, wheat roots growing, and this is just um, this time sequence here, and eventually one of them hitting the, the fertilizer band and then stopping while the other roots continue on. Now I'm going to play you a video of the um, canola roots growing.
So you can see here, it'll start growing right there, coming into the screen. And eventually what happens is it gets stuck when it gets near the fertilizer band and ceases to grow. And it continues. And then right about here, my experiment actually died for a second. And so I um, lost some of the data in between there. But you can see as it went on that the lateral roots developed, the root tip severely shrunk and became discolored. And you lost a lot of root hairs. This is one video of that happening. And this is just one inch between the seed and the fertilizer band. Here's another video of the same thing. Canola again. See ground in there. Um, okay, so you couldn't see where it hit the fertilizer band in this, but based on the growth rate of the root, we could calculate out when it should have hit. And then you see these side, um, you see the laterals appearing soon after that. Now if you focus on towards the bottom of the root, at this point you can actually see the root hairs beginning to die back, and the root beginning to shrink, and eventually you can see discoloration occurring in the root. So it pretty well, the, fertilizer, the concentration of fertilizer, so the ammonia pretty well um, killed that root also. So this is pretty neat because we're able to look at um, symptoms that we wouldn't necessarily be able to see through other means and, and what was really occurring to the roots. So some of these symptoms we saw were lateral root development, root hair shrinkage, root shrinkage, and root discoloration. So I'm going to focus in on one of these symptoms. So here's a, here's a video of the root hair dieback and this is actually towards the top of the root. We also saw a dieback there. So just for a reference, this is, I, I believe, a centimeter across. The longer end of root hairs would be like four millimeters on these particular plants. And you can see there it died all, the root hairs all died off. So these pictures and videos are great for demonstrating new symptoms or just kind of getting a flavor for how things work, but really if you're going to be publishing or analyzing this sort of d data, you need some means of um, getting numbers out of it. So this is where I haven't had a, a ton of success at automating this process, so I've had to do a lot of measurements in Photoshop, and I've also been using ArcMap, which allows a little more automation and is actually has some remote sensing features for looking at um, feet, uh, larger scale things that you can use in the same set in this root setting. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about this um, some some data we got here where we've got the um, length the maximum length of the root hairs on the y-axis and the hours after planting on the x-axis, x-axis, and then this time and the series of data are these different zones of the root length. And these zones are simply based on the order in which the root was growing. So that one to three millimeters was just the first image of root growth. That's how long the, the section of root hairs was. And so that's what I took my measurements from. So that just means that for each different time starting timestamp, I can have a different data series, which makes it a little easier to visualize and think about. So let's go ahead and look at this data. So here's that first one to three millimeters. You can see the root hairs growing. And then they, they stay at this length of close to three millimeters for a while, and then they start to die off again. Then in the four to 11 section, so that's the next section down on the root, you see a very similar sort of thing occurring, but they're lasting a little longer. In the third section, they're lasting a little longer. And then finally, in this fourth, section they actually didn't die off surprisingly enough so we're getting closer to fertilizer band but these roots are living longer but in the next section they're dying off again and finally 
in the last section, they're dying off pretty quickly. So that's closest to the fertilizer bank. Here's the same data plotted in a different way with root length on the y-axis and the maximum root hair length on the x-axis. So you can see, so these time, these series are now each for a different timestamp of photos. Um, and you can see that as the root goes down, right, the higher up root hairs are becoming more mature, so they're reaching the mature length. Now the root tip disappeared at this point, so all our root hairs are just getting towards mature length. But eventually right in here, they sort of reach that point of equilibrium or I guess the maturity, so they're not they're not growing anymore. So we'll skip towards the end of the time series now. So here we are where we started off. Um, I mean where we'd ended the last section with this kind of stable maturity and now if we keep moving we can see at the top and the bottom of the root you can see the root here is starting to die off and that just continues through the rest of the video so eventually you there's this one middle section here where you haven't seen the root hairs dying or, or shrinking back but in all the other sections they have so this is really interesting. Uh, as far as I know, it's new information. It allows us to better understand the basic interactions of soils, of the soil, the roots, and the fertilizers. It also gives us a method for evaluating the impacts of different fertilizer placements on um, roots and a method for comparing different species and varieties and the ways their roots interact with fertilizers. So. Finally, I would like to um, thank INSPIRE, um, which is an NSF fellowship that I'm a part of, uh, Washington State University, the REACH project, which this is a video for, and Washington Oil Seeds Cropping Systems. Thank you very much for listening.